Number 79. A sample of a compound of xenon and fluorine was combined in a bulb with the pressure of 18 torr. Hydrogen was added to the bulb until the pressure was 72 torr. Passage of an electric spark through the mixture produced xenon and HF. And after the HF was removed by the reaction with solid KOH, potassium hydroxide, the final pressure of xenon and the unreacted hydrogen in the bulb was 36 torr. What is the empirical formula of the xenon fluoride in the original sample? And note, xenon fluorides contain only one xenon atom per molecule. Okie dokie. Whew. They didn't really give us much, much numbers here, but we got to work with what we're given. So, in the beginning, in the beginning, there was xenon and fluorine, right? A sample of the compound xenon and fluorine was combined in a bulb with a total pressure of 18 torr. So that's where we got to start, right? We know that we had a compound that had xenon, and we know that we had a compound with fluorine. And the pressure, the total pressure, and maybe I'll say the pressure between these, total P, was equal to 18 torr. Okay. Now, they did give us a little hint here. We wanted to find the empirical formula of the xenon fluoride in the original sample, but they did tell us that there's only one xenon per molecule. So we know what this number is going to be. We know that there has to be a 1 for the xenon. So the question is, what is this number for the fluorine? Is it a 2? Is it a 3? Is it a 4? I don't know. <laughs> but we're going to find out, right? So maybe I'll put question mark. That's what we're basically solving for. We need to find this out. Now, let's move on. They said that hydrogen was added to the bulb until the total pressure was 72 torr. Okay. So we had a total pressure of the XEF, right? And then we added hydrogen to the bulb. So now if we have XEF, question mark, plus hydrogen, which is H2. Now the total pressure of those combined was 72. So total pressure was now 72 torr. So from here, if the total pressure of just the xenon fluoride was 18 torr, and now the total combined pressure with the xenon fluoride and the hydrogen we could now find out, right, this was 72 torr, we could now find out what the H2 was by just doing subtraction. If the XEF was the 18, and this is now a total of 72, I could just do 72 minus 18 to find out what the torr is uh, for the hydrogen. Okay, so 72 minus 18 is now 54 torr. That was just designated for the he uh, for the hydrogen. Okay, so I'm just kind of seeing the pieces that I could put together here, but I'm just going to keep going. Now they said, you know, passage of the electric spark through the mixture produced X, E, and F of HF. After the HF was removed by the reaction with solid KOH, the final pressure of xenon and the unreacted hydrogen in the bulb was 36 torr. Okay, so that's another thing now. So let's now write that down. So I'm just going to move this up. And they said that the final pressure of now only xenon and unreacted hydrogen was 36. Okay, so now we have xenon plus H2, and this now is unreacted. The total pressure here was 36 torr. All right, so maybe we can now find out how much was unreacted, and then from there we can figure out how much H2 did actually react. Well, remember here, let's go back to the top, right? If we're trying to find this out, if the total was 36, we should know what the total pressure of the xenon is. But that's why we go back to the top. If the total pressure is 18 torr, 
and we know that there's one mole of xenon in this compound, we use the molar uh, ratio, right? We use a mole ratio. If we have one mole of the xenon F question mark, and we know that there is one mole of xenon in the equation, right? If the moles are the same, the pressures would also be the same. It's a one-to-one -one relationship. So I know that the xenon is 18 tor. And if the final pressure of xenon on the unreacted hydrogen was 36, this xenon, because of the ratio and we can't lose any pressure, this would have to be 18. Okay. So now, since this is 18 tor and the total is 36 tor, I could find out how much did not react, right? Unreacted means did not react. So, just like we did before, I'm going to do the same thing. 36 now minus 18. And now I have 18 tor. That was unreacted. But who cares about what didn't react? We care about what actually reacts. Well, going back to the beginning, they did tell us that we had 54 tor total of H2. So if I have a total of 54 tor of H2, this has to be divided into the unreacted and the ones, you know, all the H2 that reacted. So if the 18 tor is the one that unreacted, we can find out how much actually reacted, which is 54 minus 18. Okay, we're getting somewhere. So now we know that 36 tor of H2 actually reacted. Okay, so now let's try to make a balanced equation. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this bottom one because we basically found out the information that we needed from the reacted amount. We only care about that 36 tor of H2 actually reacted. So I can basically get rid of this, okay? And maybe I will, um, I guess I'll get rid of this and I'll say that this was H2, right? There was a total of 54 tor of H2, only 36 tor uh, of H2 reacted. So now, they did say that we had that compound and hydrogen was added to the bulb and the bulb was composed of xenon and the fluorine. So from that wording, xenon, F question mark, was added with the hydrogen, and remember, hydrogen is a diatomic, so that has to be plus H2, just like we've been doing. And then it said there was an electric spark through that mixture, and Xe and Hf was produced. So there's the equation. This came together to just produce Xe plus Hf. Now let's write out what we're given, right? We only care that 36 tor of H2 was produced. So I'm going to put that here. And we have 18 tor of the compound. Okie dokie. So now, let's see. We're making a compound that's H and F. So from here, we can kind of figure out how many fluorines we need. Now, this compound was a direct split, right? One hydrogen and one fluorine. That could be talked about with moles. So for every one mole of hydrogen, one mole of fluorine should come together. But the same thing with the, the pressures. I should have one tor of hydrogen coming together with one tor of fluorine if that works better for you because we're talking about tor here. But remember, the molar ratios and the pressures, we could do the same type of relationship. Now let's see, how much tor is here? Well, there's 36 
TOR for the one whole compound. But if we just want to talk about the individual hydrogens, how many hydrogens are in H2? Yeah, there's two hydrogens. So if I wanted to find out the total TOR for the hydrogens, I would do 36, or maybe I'll do this on the bottom. I would do 36 times 2 because there was two hydrogens in the whole compound. So now 36 times 2 is 72. And that's 72 now total TOR of the hydrogen. So look back here, H and F, 1 to 1. So if I need 72 TOR of the H, how much pressure coming from the F? Yeah, I need a total of 72 TOR of F. So let's see, I have 18, but I need a total of 72 TOR. But remember, that comes from the subscript, just like we did here, right? 36 times 2 got me to 72. So if I need a total of 72, I need to times 18 by some number. And what times 18 will get me to 72? Well, you could just do basically 72 divided by 18. And if I do 72 divided by 18, I get 4. And that is your empirical formula. So the empirical formula for the xenon fluoride is XeF4. There we go. Whew. This one was mostly theoretical, guys, but I hope this helped. Please let me know in the comments. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you want to help us out. Thank you so much for viewing the video. And let me know how you guys are doing. Good luck on your tests and quizzes. And I will see you all in later lessons. Bye-bye.